The top stories tonight in Y News. The World Health Organization-led team probing the origins of COVID-19 in Wuhan, China, find no leads on possible source of virus. The Department of Health advises local government units that backup recipients must be 20% of their total priority list. Philippine National Police on high alert to ensure smooth delivery of vaccines across the country. Vice President Lenny Robredo calls on the government to set better goals to achieve herd immunity. Officials conclude that Kobe Bryant helicopter crash was caused by pilot error. And 116-year-old woman survives COVID-19. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, February 10, 2021. I am Hardlin Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I am Kathy Maraos. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, ongoing investigations by a team from the World Health Organization in Wuhan show no success in finding out the possible origins of coronavirus. Early Briones will tell us the details live. Yes, early. Herlene, good evening. The expert mission led by the World Health Organization or WHO in Wuhan, China, are far from identifying the source of coronavirus ever since it broke out in 2019. Wuhan is the city where it was first identified. However, China has since remained adamant that the virus did not necessarily originate from the country, nor did it come from a Chinese laboratory. The joint expert team of China and WHO currently hypothesized that the virus may have originated in an animal. What the animal is, they don't know. Peter Ben Embarek, a WHO food safety and animal diseases expert, stated that this idea needs more investigation with more specific targeted research. Apart from that, both the team and the China offer offer other theories of how the disease got transferred to humans. Embarak stated that the transmission to humans through trade or frozen products is another possibility. But more importantly, current findings strongly oppose the idea of the virus leaking from a, China, from a Chinese. The mission itself was a challenge to arrange and the visit has been closely monitored. Embarak states that due to the time constraints of the investigation, concrete findings are not guaranteed. Dr. Peter Dashak, another member of the WHO team, stated that the focus of investigations could sooner or later be shifted to Southeast Asia and the large network of food supply chains around it. Back to you, Harleen. Early after almost a year since the pandemic started, why is it the visit only taking place now? Harleen, their visit took months to negotiate after China only agreed to it amid massive international pressure. Be Beijing has continued to refuse appeals for a strictly independent investigation, and diplomatic issues lie behind the WHO visit, with Washington demanding a robust probe and Beijing issuing a warning not to pub politicize the investigation. Harleen? Thank you, Early Briones, reporting live from Australia. Meanwhile, the government is not in a hurry to ease the quarantine classifications in the country, even if the nationwide vaccination rollout kicks off. The government's task force against COVID-19, however, is confident that cases in the country will gradually decline. Rosalie Kos will tell us why live. Yes, uh, Rosalie, good evening. Uh, what can the public expect after the government has started its inoculation program? William, health protocols will still be strictly imposed even if the government kicks off its vaccination program in the country. Interagency Task Force uh, Co-Chairperson and Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles said that community quarantine classifications will not be 
east immediately. Kung magkaroon po ng uh, massive rollout ng vaccination, bababa po yung may infect Bababa yung cases of infection. So, ito yung ganun pa rin ang titignan natin. Yun pa rin ang magiging basis. Ang effect uh, of the vaccination rollout, inaasahan ng lahat ng mga bansa sa buong mundo, ay pag nag-rollout na po tayo ng vaccine, unti-unting makikita natin na bumababa na bumababa na bumababa ang kaso kasi nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na herd immunity within communities. Currently, Metro Manila, Batangas, Tacloban City, Davao City, Davao del Norte, Lanao del Sur, and Iligan City are under general community quarantine status for the entire month of February. The Cordillera Administrative Region is also under GCQ until the end of the, until the, end of the month as most of the cases of coronavirus variant first identified in UK are recorded in the northern region. The rest of the country is under modified GCQ, the least stringent quarantine classification. Nograles adds the government will thoroughly look at the COVID-19 situation as the government implements its, its vaccination rollout. If the result of the mass inoculation is good, the government will consider easing the community quarantine classifications. So, ito yung inaasahan natin na maging effect ng vaccination rollout, yung pag-flatten na ng curve. So sa pag-flatten na ng curve, dito na po natin um, dito na po natin makikita na magshi-shift na yung uh, ibang localities, mga LGUs from GCQ to MGCQ, from MGCQ to new normal. The government is prepared to start its mass vaccination program on February 15. According to Malacanang, it targets to inoculate 100% of the adult population this year. The Duterte administration seeks to inoculate 70 to 80 million Filipino adults to achieve herd immunity. Back to you, Jacob. Or oh, back to you, William. Sorry. Yes. Uh, thank you, Rosalie Cos, reporting live. Meanwhile, Vice President Lenny Robredo has expressed willingness to get vaccinated in public to boost public's confidence. Meanwhile, the Vice President also believes the government should strive to achieve herd immunity earlier than its target. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. Vice President Lenny Robredo says she is willing to be inoculated first publicly to encourage more people to participate in the vaccination program. Robredo said this in a Facebook video where she answered some frequently asked questions about COVID-19 vaccination in the country in a bid to allay public fears. Ang priority natin healthcare professionals at elderly, pero kung kinakailangan na magpabakuna tayo una, in public para ma-encourage yung taong magpabakuna, gagawin natin yun. The Department of Health has yet to comment on the matter. Earlier, the palace said President Rodrigo Duterte decided to be vaccinated in private because he will be injected in the buttocks. The University of Santo Tomas COVAX research team earlier urged the president and all government officials to be vaccinated in public to reassure Filipinos about the safety and efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccines. This was after an open access online survey that was conducted by the team in January revealed that 71.6 percent of over 15,000 respondents are willing to receive the vaccine after politicians have been vaccinated. The vice president adds the government should strive to achieve herd immunity against COVID-19 earlier than its target. UH earlier said it is looking into finishing the vaccination of all the targeted population by 2023 or possibly earlier. Dapat yung goal natin better than 2023. Yun. Kasi as of now, ang dami naghihirap ng mga Pilipino, ang dami nang nawalan ng trabaho. So dapat yung goal natin, the faster na babakunahan ang mas maraming tao. Robredo calls for unity to expedite the vaccine rollout, boost public confidence on the safety of the vaccines, and achieve herd immunity for the country to go back to normal. Horlin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
With the expected arrival of the first batch of COVID-19 vaccines in the Philippines this month, the Department of Health is accelerating its information drive to the public. Meanwhile, the DOH advised a set of number that local government units must prepare in case some recipients back out. Aiko Miguel reports. The government faces challenges on the COVID-19 vaccination, especially that it is nearing. Aside from the prevention of any vaccine wastage from the storage to delivery, the Department of Health says the public should have confidence on the inoculation. The more people are convinced to be inoculated, it will be easier to achieve herd immunity and more will be protected against the transmissible disease. Meron nga tayong bakuna, baka wala namang pupunta para magpabakuna. So what we are trying to do right now, is intensifying the information. We are now highlighting our experts in talking to the public so that they can better understand the benefits and the safety of these vaccines that are forthcoming. Also, the DOH says to avoid wastage. The DOH has advised local government units to prepare for their quick substitution list. This is a list of backup vaccinees once some withdraws, backs out or will not show up on the day of COVID-19 vaccination. According to the DOH, 20% of those listed as priority list should be included in the list. Uh, wala po tayong basihan sa 20%, pero gusto lang po natin makasigurado na kung sakali na dumating tayo doon sa day of vaccination and we will have refusals, at least we have this reserve 20%. So for example, ang PGH, meron siyang 4,000 plus na mga empleyado. And for every day, for example din, kung tatapusin niya yan ng limang araw, maaaring meron siyang walong daang babakunahan. Na nasa listahan, tatawagan ko, pagka halbawa nakita natin na ang pasok ay hindi magiging walong daan, papupuntahin na natin doon sa ospital. The health department says the arrival of COVID-19 vaccines in the country is still indicative, but the DOH believes it's soon to happen. So all vaccines should be prepared and the information drive of the government should be strengthened. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Security officials criticize the Communist Party of the Philippines or CPP for imposing conditions on the delivery of COVID-19 vaccines across the country, saying by laying demands is actually a threat to the government's nationwide vaccine rollout. Lea Ilagan explains why. Department of Interior and Local Government or DILG spokesperson under Secretary Jonathan Malaya slammed the statement of CPP spokesperson Marco Valbuena yesterday that they will not hamper the delivery of the COVID-19 vaccines in the country if the government will not use military trucks. The CPP also strongly suggested that the vehicles transporting the vaccines must be clearly marked with a red cross over a white background to avoid being mistaken as a military vehicle. Malaya said the statement of the CPP is actually threatening the delivery of the vaccine in conflict-affected areas. The co-chair of NTF COVID-19 Task Group Prevention also said that the communist rebel must place the country first and the benefit of the people before their interest. Malaya adds the military trucks are the only vehicles that can reach mountainous areas. The Philippine National Police, however, will remain on high alert to assure the safe delivery of vaccines. PNP spokesperson Police Brigadier General Ildebrandi Osana said, the rebels have no right to set conditions on the government function. Hindi sila isang entity na merong karapatan upang mag-set ng condition para sa mga government functions. They're all they are, they are committing terrorist acts and uh, this does not fit well with our idea of uh, peace building. So, ang panawagan namin lado, tumahimik na lang sila, huwag na sila makialam. Hayaan na lang nila ang mga nata gobyerno na magtrabaho. Meanwhile, AFP Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Cirilito Subihana said the action of the CPP NPA on the delivery of the vaccine will prove if they are humans. Well, diyan natin makikita po kung talagang they are human because ang gagawin po natin is humanitarian activity tapos i-disrupt nila. So makita ng taong bayan na talagang uh, salot sila ng ating lipunan. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue.
We serve the people. We give glory to God. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Department of Health or DOH agrees with the Food and Drug Administration that the emergency use authorization given to the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine will remain. This despite South Africa putting its rollout of AstraZeneca's vaccine after a study showed it offered reduced protection from the COVID-19 variant identified there. Meanwhile, the Department of Health said the, uh, it is not keen on recommending a travel ban on countries that have already detected cases of the B1351 variant. Aiko Miguel reports. Laboratories conducting genome sequencing have resumed to their regular operations. In the coming days, they will be releasing results of samples sequenced from different regions to know whether there are other COVID-19 variants existing in the country. But according to DOH spokesperson under Secretary Maria Rosario Vergere, the other variant only existing in the Philippines is the B.1.1.7 variant or that which was originally discovered from United Kingdom. This is why the DOH agrees with the FDA statement to let AstraZeneca's EUA to stay. This in spite of the report that South Africa paused the rollout of AstraZeneca in their country, for it only gives minimal protection to individuals against B.1.351 or the variant discovered in South Africa. According to the DOH, AstraZeneca passed the standards of experts in the country, reason why it was granted with EUA. Ang pinaka pangako sa atin ang mga bakuna no uh, aside from if we can prevent mild to moderate cases but the ang pinaka importante sa atin is for us to prevent or to lesser the chances of having severe infections lesser the chances of dying lesser the chances of being hospitalized so yun po yung pinaka objective ng ating government so that we can reduce mortalities and therefore more morbidity DOH also explained that although there are more cases recorded due to discovered COVID-19 variants in other countries, borders of the country should not be continuously restricted or closed, especially that of South Africa. Just because a B.1.351 COVID-19 variant was discovered there does not mean a travel ban be imposed. What is important now, according to the DOH, is the stringent implementation of COVID-19 mitigation measures like testing, isolation, and quarantine due to the threat of more transmissible COVID-19 variants. We cannot remain to be in lockdown or restricted forever and isolated ang Pilipinas. No? Kasi talagang um, interzonal, intercountry, lahat na no? ang virus na ito. So, napagkasunduan po sa IATF and uh, based pa rin sa recommendation ng ating experts na magkaroon na lang tayo ng more stringent protocols para tayo ay magkaroon din ng kasiguruhan na mapiprevent natin kung sakasakaling papasok nga ito mga tao na may variant dito sa ating bansa. Ay, Ko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippines recorded today 1,345 more cases of COVID-19, pushing the country's total case count to 541,516. The Department of Health said that 5.6% or 30,188 of the country's overall COVID-19 tally are active cases or those who are still ill of the active cases. 88.2% are mild cases. 6.1% are asymptomatic, 2.6% are in critical condition, 2.5% have severe symptoms, while 0.60% are in moderate condition. The recovery count jumped to 499,971 after 276 new survivors were added to the tally. However, the death count was pushed to 11,401 after 114 more patients succumbed to the disease. A house salon is asking President Rodrigo Duterte to certify as urgent the proposed Bayanihan to arise as one act or commonly known as the Bayanihan 3 bill. However, the palace downplayed the need for the legislative measure. Ray Palayo will tell us why. An economist and Marikina representative Stella Kimbo sees the need for the enactment of Bayanihan to arise as one act or Bayanihan 3 
which was filed recently in the House of Representatives together with Speaker Alan Velasco. The lawmaker said that one of the main drivers of the 9.5% economic contraction last year is the decrease in the household consumption. Kapag magpatuloy ang pagtaas ng presyo ng pagkain at maapektuhan ang ibang sektor, baka naman magkaroon tayo ng stagflation. Kombinasyon ito ng economic stagnation, pati na rin ang inflation. Sa madaling salita, sabay nangyayari ang pagbagsak ng ekonomiya at pagtaas ng mga presyo ng bilihin. Mataas na nga ang presyo ng bilihin, wala pang trabaho. Dadami ang mahirap na Pilipino. Kaya't kailangan gumastos ng pamala, ng pamahalaan para ayudahan ang mga pamilya, manggagawa, magsasaka at maliliit na negosyo. Biennial 3 sees to solve the problem and not to further compound it in the near future. The bill asks 420 billion pesos allocation, mostly for assistance to affected workers. Kimbo highlighted that every Filipino shall receive at least 1,000 pesos. But family members may also be entitled to other programs under the bill. Family of five, so may 5,000. On top of that, meron tayong studyanting dalawa, so meron siyang another 2,000. On top of that, kung displaced worker, si father, meron pang additional 8,000 pesos. Kung sabihin natin, si mother, farmer, siya po ay uh, meron pong babuyan at uh, naapektuhan po ng uh, ASF. Meron po siyang, more or less, based on my average computations lang, ha, may 14,000. Palas has this to say. Titignan po natin, una-una, kung talagang kakaya na kung kinakailangan pa yan, at pangalawa, kung meron po tayong possible fund sources. Kimbo said that there is 1.6 trillion available in the Treasury Department that can be utilized if the bill will be enacted. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. In other news, the Manila City government will provide food subsidies to 700,000 families under its COVID-19 food security program. The food subsidy includes 3 kilos of rice, 16 pieces of canned goods, and 8 sachets of coffee. The Manila LGU initially allotted 3 million pesos budget for the said program. Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso launched the program to provide aid to poverty-stricken families in the country's capital as well as mitigate the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the Philippine economy. Dumagoso also assured that the LGU will continue its housing projects amid the pandemic. A group of bus operators are appealing to local government units in the province to open their borders and allow the entry of their buses transporting passengers from Metro Manila. John Nano explains why. As the government still limits the movement of people in order to prevent further transmission of COVID-19, majority of provincial bus routes are still not allowed to travel as several local government units are imposing strict border control. Because of this, Provincial Bus Operators Association warns over the proliferation of colorum vehicles online, offering provincial trips at higher rates. And to avoid this illegal scheme, the provincial bus operators are appealing to the local government units to allow the entry of provincial provincial buses coming from Metro Manila. According to Alex Yage, president of the Association of Provincial Bus Operators, there are still some provinces who prohibits provincial bus trips. Among these were the provinces of Pangasinan, Tarlac, Quezon, and the entire Bicol region. So instead of taking authorized trips, many people are patronizing colorum vehicles. Kami ay umaapila sa kanila na buksan na nila ang kanilang mga probinsya at uh, nangangako kami mga operator dito sa probinsyang ito na kung ano man yung safety protocol na kailangan ipatupad ay willing kami na sundin lahat ng safety protocol. In Araneta Bus Terminal, only trips bound for San Fernando and the Upampanga were available and there are only few passengers. According to the general manager of the Araneta City Bus Terminal, there were a lot of Glorum vehicles within the vicinity of Araneta Cubao who are taking advantage since many passengers are coming in the area. In this dito tumuloy ang mga pasero and uh, hatak nila yung palabas but unfortunately natataga sila sa pamasahe 
and it's not really safe considering na hindi sila authorized. According to the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB, their anti-colorum operations are still active, especially in the regions. However, their manpower is not enough to eliminate all these colorum vehicles. The LTFRB is planning to work with the provincial bus operators in negotiating with the local government units regarding the opening of routes. The agency is planning to ready around 50% of the existing routes prior to the pandemic, which will be operational once the LGUs approve their operations and open their borders. So at this LC operator, magkaroon din siya ng role na tulungan si LTFRB or the government to coordinate with the LGU. Hindi lang para mag-open but also to to help them in the uh, provision ng mga health protocols. So, once na mayroon ng go signal, at least hindi na ulit mag-prepare si LTFRB, it will take another time para mag-open. But as of now, there's still a lot of LGUs in the provinces who are imposing strict border control due to fear of possible entry of a COVID-19 carrier. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The principal author of the child car seat law says that there has been deficiency in the information drive for the measure that intends to protect children on motor vehicles. Nina Armilio will tell us why. The Land Transportation Office, or LTO, and the Philippine Information Agency have fallen short in information dissemination, leading to criticisms from the public against the child car seat law, according to its principal author. Republic Act 11229, or the Child Safety in Motor Vehicles Act, this allows children 12 years old and below, who are shorter than 4'11", from sitting in the front passenger seat of the vehicle and are to be left unattended inside a private vehicle. It took effect on Tuesday, 2nd of February, after its implementing rules and regulations was approved on December 23 of last year. In Section 11, the Transportation and Health Department, the PIA, and private agencies and organizations shall undertake regular nationwide information, education, and communication campaign within six months from the passage of this act. Sinabi ng LTO bukas mag implement na ang, ang sambayan ng Pilipino. So yung mga kababa, nagulat sila. Tsaka, kumbaga, hindi nila alam kung ano yung tungkol sa batas. Tapos bukas po ay implement na. Panagay ko doon nagkulang. Meanwhile, the statement of LTO NCR West Regional Director, Attorney Clarence Viginto, that even tall children must use a child seat, and if they do not fit, the family must acquire a larger vehicle instead, seem to have brought confusion. Ejercito, meanwhile, clarifies that a child car seat law does not cover public transportation. Instead, it is just a recommendation being a parent who cares for his child. I was talking... Um... Uh, from the point of view of the safety, no road safety advocate, na mas magandang gamitin kung meron. No? And uh, yun po ang aking pong sinabi. Kaya lang ang lumabas sa infographics ay dapat meron. No? Kung baga, magkaibang magkaiba po yun. No? Kung meron pong available, optional po. Kung meron magpapahiram, gamitin po natin um, uh, for the sake of safety of the child. Kaya lang, um, ang lumabas po ay talagang obligado. Hindi po. According to LTO Chief Assistant Secretary Edgar Galvante, there will be no penalties to be imposed on violators of the Child Safety and Motor Vehicles Act. What has taken effect is the first part of the provision of the law, which is to highlight the importance of safety and welfare of infants and children and to prevent traffic-related deaths and injuries. Ejercito added that the law does not intend to punish but to protect children when being transported. Ako bilang magulang, mm. kaya kung uh, mahal sa buhay na bata na according to the law, kailangan i-secure natin, eh, Hindi ako mag-aantay na sitahin ako ng LTO o ng sino mang law enforcement agent para tignan ko ako ay tumutupad sa batas o hindi. Siguro primordial uh, responsibility na po natin yon. Based on a report from the Philippine Statistics Authority, road collision is the second leading cause of death among children. Almost 700 children lost their lives to road collision in 2006 to 2014. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God.
Former U.S. President Donald Trump will face a second impeachment trial after the Senate voted that it is constitutional. Miguel Rey de Leon reports. In a 56-44 vote largely along party lines, the U.S. Senate sets the stage for former U.S. President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial to begin on Wednesday. Democrats hope to disqualify Trump from ever again holding public office. But Tuesday's outcome suggested they faced long odds. Only six Republican senators joined Democrats to vote in favor of allowing the trial to take place, far short of the 17 needed to secure conviction. Convicting Trump would require a two-thirds majority in the 50-50 Senate. The vote capped a dramatic day in the Senate chamber. The Senate shall proceed with the trial as provided under the provisions of that resolution. Trump, who was impeached by the Democratic-led House on January 13, is only the third president in U.S. history to be impeached and the only one to be impeached twice. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden is expected to focus on other priority such as the effects of the pandemic in the country rather than watch the impeachment trial of his predecessor. The Senate has their job, they're about to begin it. I'm sure they're going to conduct themselves well and uh, that's all I'm going to have to say about impeachment. Miguel Rey de Leon, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The mystery behind the metal monolith that appeared and disappeared on a field in Turkey was revealed to be a stunt for Turkey's national space program. Marvi Delfin will give us the details live. Yes, Marvi? Harleen, the three-meter-high metal slab was reported gone on Tuesday morning after it was first discovered by a farmer on Sunday near the UNESCO World Heritage Site, Gubekli Tepe, which is home to megalithic structures dating to the 10th millennium BC, thousands of years before Stonehenge. On Sunday, Turkish media reported that John Barnes were looking through CCTV footage and investigating vehicles that may have transported the monolith to the site. A state-run news agency quoted the farmer saying it was unclear if the monolith was placed on the field for the purposes of marketing and its disappearance baffled residents in the province even more. But as an image of the monolith was later projected on a screen during a televised event, it turns out that the shiny structure was a publicity gimmick before a government event in which Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan announced a space program for the country. This explains the inscription on the monolith written in ancient Turkic Gokturk alphabet, which read, Look at the sky, you will see the moon, informing the public of Turkey's plans to land on the moon by 2023. In the ceremony marking the centennial of the founding of the Turkish Republic, Erdogan also declared Turkey's goal to send Turkish citizens into space with international cooperation, to work with other countries on building a space sport and to create a global brand in satellite technology. With the aim of joining the handful of other countries with space programs, Turkey established the Turkish Space Agency or TUA in 2018. Despite supporters saying the space program will provide jobs for researchers and scientists, critics have questioned the government's decision to spend vast sums of money on an ambitious 10-year space roadmap when the country's economy is suffering. Back to you, Harleen. All right, Marvi, thank you for that live report. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board determined that the pilot on the fateful helicopter trip that killed Los Angeles Lakers superstar Kobe Bryant was to blame for the crash in January 2020. NTSB Chairman Robert Sumwalt said the pilot Ara Zubayan was flying under visual flight rules or VFR, which legally prohibited him from penetrating clouds. However, he continued his VFR flight through the clouds into instrument meteorological conditions. Zobayan told air traffic controllers that the 
Zinker Sky S76B helicopter was climbing out of heavy fog when it was actually descending rapidly in a steep left turn, plowing into hills just outside Los Angeles. The NTSB added that there was still investigating the pilot's likely self-induced pressure to complete the flight. In addition to uh, Bryant and the pilot, Bryant's daughter Gianna and six other passengers were killed in the crash. There were no survivors in the incident. Back into our stories in the country. The executive branch of the government has called for a food security summit to discuss current issues affecting the agriculture industry. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the summit aims to tackle mitigation measures on issues affecting the sector, such as the surge in pork prices, drop in farm gate prices of palai, palai and the outbreak of the African swine fever or ASF. The Food Security Summit also seeks to present some models for agribusiness value chain approach, LGU-led agri-fishery extension system, and strengthening the role and capacities of local price coordinating councils and regional development councils. Roque, however, did not mention as to when the summit will be held. The palace issued the statement after the Pork Producers Federation of the Philippines appealed to the government for a dialogue to address the problem in the supply of pork and chicken that resulted in the increase in prices of pork and chicken meat products. The Supreme Court explains the reason why two ITAs who were charged and detained under the feared anti-terror law have been barred to join the petitions against the controversial measure. Dante Amento will give us the details live. Yes, Dante? Arlene Supreme Court spokesperson Brian Husaka said that Chief Justice Justado Peralta explained that the Jave Gurung and Junior Ramos petition in intervention was dismissed because there is already a pending case before the trial court. Kusaka said the Chief Justice did not provide other details. Aitas Gurung and Ramos have been detained at the Olongapo District Jail since August 2020. They are accused of committing terrorism for allegedly shooting a soldier in an encounter at Sitio Lumibao, Barangay, Uhawen, San Marcelino, Zambale, Solicitor General Jose Calida disclosed during yesterday's oral arguments that Gurong and Ramos withdraw their bid to join the petitions against the Anti-Terrorism Act. Calida added the two were forced to sign the petition by a lawyer from the National Union of People's Lawyer or NUPF. Gurung and Ramos executed a pinagtamang salaysay ng pag-uurong stating as follows. In number two, ayaw po namin pirmahan ang mga dokumento referring to the petition in intervention. Napilitan na rin kaming pumirma. Binigyan po kami ng isang libo at hatiin daw po namin. Meanwhile, Harleen NUPL has denied the allegations. The NUPL's national office questioned how the ITAS can say in an affidavit that they were forced to sign when both of them cannot write. Karapatan, meanwhile, questioned the timing of the alleged withdrawal of the petition. And that's the latest live. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live. In France, a 116-year-old woman survived COVID-19 and she is looking forward to celebrating her 117th birthday. Maria Latosa will tell us why. Lucille Hondon tested positive for coronavirus in her retirement home in Toulon, southern France, on January 16. She was isolated from other residents but displayed no symptoms. After three weeks, she was considered recovered. Hondon, a nun, told in the French newspaper Va Matin that she did not even realize that she had the virus and said that she did not even worry when she received her diagnosis. On Tuesday, a spokesperson for 
for the retirement home said that Andre was doing well. Born on February 11, 1904, the COVID-19 survivor is getting ready to celebrate her birthday on Thursday. According to data compiled by the Los Angeles-based Gerontology Research Group, or GRG, Hondon is the world's second oldest and Europe's oldest person. Maria Latoza, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news. February 10, 2021. I am Harini Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Captain Maraos. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.